Closing arguments are underway in the bribery and extortion case against Chicago's longest serving alderman, Ed Burke. The feds spent the afternoon weaving together for the jury the testimony and evidence they've heard over the last month. CBS 2 political reporter Chris Ty has covered this case gavel to gavel. He is live for us at the Dirksen Federal Courthouse. And Chris, we want to ask you what the jury's hearing in this final stretch. What they're hearing, Joe and Marie, is sort of a best of, the greatest hits of what the prosecution has presented over the last 20 days of testimony. Three dozen witnesses, hundreds of recordings. There were moments, certainly, that stood out from the rest. And today, they are, as you say, weaving together those points in front of the jury, saying, among other things, standing at the center of that steady drumbeat of unlawful activity is this man. Then pointing to Ed Burke sitting at his table with his lawyers, adding he had his hand out time and again, demanding money and benefits from the very people he was supposed to be working on behalf of, adding this was his racket and his pattern of racketeering. Chris, we heard a lot from the defense, especially that in, in several of these cases, Burke never got the money or the ask that he was looking for. So how are prosecutors framing that in these closings? Yeah, so that is critical here, Joe. They're talking about how the charge of attempted extortion does not require him to have gotten the thing he was seeking out to get. They made points time and again that he tried to get his goddaughter an internship at the Field Museum, didn't happen. Tried to get the business of a Burger King franchisee, didn't happen. They're telling the jury it doesn't need to have happened for him to be found guilty, and they are really trying to point that out. Also adding that, you know, in the opening statement, Burke's team said that you will not hear any evidence or see any evidence that says Ed Burke was trying to make money on all of this, prosecutors telling the jury, what do you think you heard over these last 20 days? Does that wash? Chris, you know how complicated this case is. Four schemes, three defendants. How are they breaking this down so that the jury can really process it and take it in? Because there's a lot of information. Yeah, it really is a lot of information, Marie. They are asking a lot of these 12 people in that jury box. They are using charts and they are using graphs and really trying to break it down. But yes, it is very, very complicated. Four schemes, three defendants, as you said, and there are also hundreds of pieces of evidence. Sometimes the Danny Solis testimony and recordings can be used against one set of defendants, but not another. So they're really taking their time. It's why this is probably going to be a six hour closing before things are all said and done. They're going to pick up again tomorrow at 930. Prosecutors will wrap their part and then defense attorneys will begin their closing statements. All right, Chris Ty, live for us tonight. Thanks for the update.